Land, and welcome to another episode of the G Show Podcast. I am G1, and this is the state of gaming in 2023. I'm joined by my brother from another mother, G73, a.k.a. Megzi, a.k.a. Chase. What's going on, brother? Not much, man. What's up with everyone else? Everything is good. Everything is good. Ready to talk some video games, a little change of pace? Yeah, man. I just want to say something real quick. I tried the PS5 version of The Witcher 3 last night, and that is a whole new game now, and I am beyond impressed. Well, look at that. And uh, also joining us is JR, my wrestling compadre. What's going on, JR? Listen, I've been behind on the wrestling. <laughs> so I, the new job's kicking my ass, so. <laughs> but no, it's good to be here. I'm excited. Built two PCs this week and then built my personal one. Listen. Any PC enthusiasts get to 5700X from Ryzen or AMD, the Ryzen 5700X. It's, it's good. I have no idea what he's talking about because I do not PC game. I am not a PC gamer. Although a lot of people say, yo, G1, you should be a PC gamer. Yeah, okay, whatever. I, I'm an <laughs> Xbox guy. But all that being said, we're here to talk about so far the state of gaming in 2023. I know. That Sony has its state of play coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, there's a lot of crazy things happening in, in regards of uh, A titles, quote-unquote, falling flat on their faces once again. Um, and it's crazy because it seems like the biggest video game news is Super Mario Brothers, the movie, being the greatest video game movie ever made now. I, I mean, what kind of world do we live in when that is the gaming rage of 2023. But um, let's let, let's get into it because there's a, there's a couple of things to talk about. Um, and I, you know, I want to start with you, brother Chase, uh, because you you have. I mean, we have to start with Redfall, I, I guess, right? Like off the top, because that was supposed to be like the the big first release of 2023, right? That was supposed to blow your socks off. And apparently, it's you get dragged through the mud. Are you asking me personally? I'm asking you personally. Well, no, Redfall was an Xbox exclusive. Right, that's what I said. Um, and I don't own an Xbox. The problem was was um, when Redfall was being advertised. And um, um, Microsoft and Phil Spencer and Arcane Studios were talking about the game. They were hyping it up to be this game-breaking, uh, game-changing first-person shooter that you could hook up and play co-op, four-player co-op with your friends. And they literally said, we have tested our game and we've had our reviews come in. And our feedback is very positive, and we are confident and excited for our game. Well, after they said that, this was months before the game launched, maybe two or three or so, we started to see more things about Redfall. Redfall was becoming to look like a polished turd. But everyone was still hopeful and skeptical because there were some things being noticed in the game trailers and the test footage that looked really off. Well, fast forward to its launch day and the game was completely broken and destroyed. The game did not work. It did not work on console. It did not work on Steam. The game was a nightmare. We should... The, it, it, it... And... Phil Spencer responded saying that, you know, we had our marketing team review the game and they gave us the information that the game was fine. Well, now we're stuck in this position where their game that they've been working on and put tons of tons of dollars in is a big flop and now has put Microsoft in a very kind of gray area to where 
people, the gaming community, at least from what I'm gathering, is not, I mean, obviously it's not all, but what's been on the news lately is, is what is Microsoft's, what is Microsoft going to do? Because not only that, um, oh, well, you know, Callisto was PlayStation, Callisto, Callisto can be played on Xbox, but it's not an exclusive. Um, Redfall's the main thing. And the big topic is, is what is Xbox going to do? Because um, they haven't had a big, big game. Everything last year was Halo Infinite. Well, Halo Infinite ended up being a flop as well. I doubt that. But and okay. so, so we are stuck now with Xbox having two main exclusives that they've been working on that have underperformed. And Microsoft is in this area of what are they going to do? And that's basically what the topic is within the community right now is, uh, you know, what what are they going to do? You know, because right now it's not looking like – I mean, I don't have an Xbox, so I can't personally put my opinion on it. But, you know, and other people might be different, but it's – Lingering the question, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I guess just what, what does Xbox do from here? Because now that they're in this hurtful position, aside from getting their um, acquisition with Activision, you know, what what's going on here? There's also the big topic of, you know, why – because it's, it's not just Xbox. Forspoken came out, and that game was – terrible too and hogwarts legacy was very terrible at launch too and um jedi survivor terrible at launch as well so the question is is what's going on within the gaming community but the main thing is lately the past few weeks since redfall has launched is is basically microsoft doesn't have anything impressive in the works or anything right now to justify Xbox uh, being there with selling games. And it's it's affecting the community in that way is from what I've been reading and listening into on, and that's basically what I've been seeing. JL, JL let me ask you, what do you think of uh, the state of Redfall and what it's done to the gaming community? Look. I looked at that game, and I was like, Left for Dead with vampires, let's do it. Yeah. And honestly, I forgot the release date, because like, I was like, yeah, that trailer's done. And then, out of mind. <laughs> that, it happens, then it happens. Silent Hill 2 is right around the corner for me, so I'm like, I'm like fixated on that. So, and then it comes out. And I, I, my buddies are like, yo, it's a pile of shit. What am I talking about, man? Like, it's like we're dead with them. How do you fuck this up? Oh, they they do evolve, but worse um, to an extent. And then it, it's buggy. It's a pile of shit. I watched a little bit of gameplay on it. I watched Angry Joe. I don't watch him that often, but this is one of the times I watched him play it. And I was like, ew. So I, I, I kind of stayed the fuck away from Redfall. The problem is, is that game, the reason why I forgot about it, that shit wasn't marketed, like, at least to me, at fucking all. That game was announced. We saw what it was. I was like, that's dope. And I didn't fucking hear about it for, like, what felt like a year. And then it came out, and everyone's like, it's shit. And I'm like, is that the Left for Dead vampire? Yeah. What's wrong with it? And that's when I started looking at it, like, oh, God. That should have been Microsoft's like, hey, you like Left for Dead. You like Left for Dead, too. Well, we can't do zombies, but vampires are cool because it's unique. Vampires could have different abilities, you know, they could suck blood from you using telekinetic power, they could go, like, invisible, you throw some rice on the ground and Dracula's gotta count the grains. That's lore accurate, by the way, with vampires. I'm serious. <laughs> you could have done something and then it ended up being a buggy disaster. 
I don't know what's going on with Microsoft because, yeah, I watched what Phil Spencer was talking about. We'll probably, we'll definitely talk about it. Um, I, I just, I don't get it. Like, this should have, it's not even like, it, it should have just, A, been promoted more, and B, should have been just like six more months in the oven. Six more months, that game could have been something. It could have came out not buggy, features there, just stuff working. So, I don't know. And as far as, like, like Chase, you were saying, the diminishing returns, like stuff flopping, I have kind of a theory on that that's not really a theory. Um, We're in the middle of a fucked up economy, and game companies are like, hey, you like this game? Oh, yeah. You like the $60 price tag? Sure. Fuck you, $70. No, I'm not paying $70 fucking dollars for games. Still have it, by the way. So right. I think that's that's got to be it. You know, especially, like, for me, I'm not buying games. I'm rebuilding computers. <laughs> like, my buddy's going elsewhere. But when I look at that $70 price tag, it's like, and I don't know how much Redfall retail for. Was it 60 or 70 Do you I, know? I, yeah, I think it was fifty nine ninety nine. Okay. What? Really? I thought all games go with yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it, I don't think it was a super expensive game. But either way, and this is, this should be that awakening from people is like 60, 70 to a hundred. It is 70. It is 70. Yeah, it See, so. that's the, th- that's what I mean. There, Microsoft in or who dev- Arcane Studios is asking seventy dollars for a turd, an unfinished turd, a constipated turd. People are waking up, and I'm glad because we deserve. If you're going to raise the price of your games, you're going to sit here and cry. Oh, it's harder to develop with all your bullshit microtransactions, your fucking loot boxes, your season passes. You're going to raise it to $70. At least make sure the fucking game's working and finished. Sorry, a little bit of a tangent, but it, it really gets under my skin. That's why I don't buy games anymore. I haven't bought shit. Like, for six months, I haven't bought a single game. It's been a dry spell for me, and it's upsetting. I got Resident Evil 4 for free from my work. Also, there hasn't really been any games out either. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that's not true though, because Resident Evil Four dropped, and I bought that. And that was fun. Listen, going forward. <laughs> okay, okay. Go ahead. But I'm talking about like how it used to be when there was games to look forward to, like every quarter. Oh yeah. Like how it used to be. It's not like that anymore. Now it's like one game every four months. And you've got to remember too. Resident Evil 4 Remake dropped, and it's still on PC at least. On my Xbox, it's running a lot better. Still issues with the ray tracing, you know, ray tracing with the hair strands. You're getting 40 frames per second. I'm not okay with that. Just limit it to a locked 30. I think that's okay. Native 4K, hair strands, and ray tracing, a locked 30. You'll be perfect. Just lock that frame rate. On PC, it's still a disaster. That game is still messed up for, again, the price. So I paid 70 for it because I actually love Resident Evil 4, the original one. I own that game like six times. That's just me. Um, Two for me, so. Yeah. But, but, let's, you know, but let's, 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 you know, talk about the Resident Evil didn't launch broken, though. That's oh, true. No, it, it didn't launch broken. It launched with very bad performance issues that have been gradually getting patched on both PC and console, but it was there. It okay. was there, especially on Xbox, because, and I don't know, uh, G1, if you noticed that, because I did, before that next patch, it took a lot of moving the Joy-Con to get Leon to move. Like, the dead zone was completely off, and they patched it perfect for me after that. It was a weird bug, and I I was freaking out. I'm like, yo, my controller's going out. Watch the YouTube video from Digital Foundry, and they actually brought that up. It was a bug, and it has since been patched. But for two weeks, week, two weeks on Xbox, that was an issue. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, 
I don't notice these things. Like the whole thing you were talking about, ray tracing and the hair frolics. I don't give two shits about that shit. I bought the game. The game runs. I'm playing it. I had a good time. I don't give a fuck if you can see Leon's fucking hair go over his hair or behind his hair. I don't care. As long as the motherfucking guy moves, we're having a good old fucking time. All that shit goes out the window for me, but I don't build PCs either. You understand? So, um, I didn't notice it. I also haven't played Resident Evil 4 in about a month because after I beat it, I messed with it for a little bit longer, you know, just to do odds and end things. Mm. Then I started playing Resident Evil 2, and in the midst of playing that, Dead Island 2 came out, so I've been playing that. Um, How is that, by the way? Real quick. I like the first one better. It is, it's all right for what it is, but you know okay. what? And this is going to be a, a, a theme I come back to when we get to the PlayStation aspect of this. It's yeah. more of the same. It's more of the same. <laughs> it's not just Dead Island. This thing is contagious across gaming, period, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Every different game feels exactly the same as something else. There's no getting around it. And, and like y'all were talking, like you were talking about with these $70 price tags now. Now, listen, you might not pay $70 for a lot of people might hate that shit. I know someone and he's a close personal friend of mine who goes and buys the $1,500 versions of games. And I'm like, what the fuck? What? Because he's like, yo, I'm a gamer. And if I want something, I'm going to pay for it. Like, I'll put it like this. You know how Chase gets... um satisfaction from beating games on the hardest level and yeah. i could never do that i look at chase like he's fucking crazy but he does it but he does it right he does it and, and yeah. massive props because i play games now on the easiest level i'm in it for the story i want to breeze through it relax hang out come back oh here's a new game let's get it and, and breeze through it right um this dude's like now nah, i want all the bells and whistles but hit most of his shit is online games, sports games. He wants to have everything so he can be on top right off the bat. Respect. This is why I don't play multiplayer games. Um, and that's another theme I want to get into in this podcast. Is it... Do you do you have an example of a game he's purchased, though? Yeah. He, I'm just curious. He, any recent sports game, he buys, like, the most no, expensive... No. Yeah, he'll, he'll buy, like, the most expensive version. Ooh. To get all the bells and whistles. Uh, so, like, even, like, with the wrestling game, he'll, he buys the most expensive versions. But you know what? He works for his money. He de- the, Here's my thing. You work. You pay your bills. If that's how you want to spend your money for you, oh, so be it. And he yeah. told me that lesson. Because I was like, you pay what for what? I was going to. But when he broke it down like that, I was like, yeah, I can't be mad at you. Who the fuck am I to tell you what to do with your money? You know what I mean? Um, hell, I'm still bootlegging movies, but shh, don't tell nobody. Don't tell <laughs> nobody. Um, you too. <laughs> but no, like, can it be? Can it be multiplayer games that is causing this? This? Um, this? Uh, what the fuck? What, this like conundrum in the gaming community? This? 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 Poor, poorly received games because everybody wants to jump on. Like you mentioned, Halo, right? Um. And I looked it up because I personally didn't believe it. I didn't. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy Halo Infinite. But I look it up and I see everything you were talking about and some more. So you were holding back, Chase. But I see where you're coming from when you're like, it was a failure. It's a flop. Well, I, I'm not in this. I'm not in this to trash anybody. Oh, no, no, I'm no, no. I know. About no, no. It, you know. I know. I know what you're saying. Like, no. I, like, I didn't believe you, right? Like, I was like, how is he saying it's a failure? I I won Xbox, you know. (laughs) But like I said, I'm sitting here, I'm like, how is he saying it's a failure? I look it up. I see what you're saying, and there's more. You were holding back. And I'm like, okay, all right. I don't play multiplayer games. I'm a story-driven gamer, right? I want story and that's it. I me as well. So Yeah, I know. Because I invite you and you don't join. Who are you talking about? I'm messing with you. Oh, all right, yeah. But I'm just saying, so like in that regard, when I play like Halo Infinite, I enjoy it. When I play uh, yeah. Dead Island 2, I mean, I like the first one better, but, you know, it is what it is. And then I didn't know, but like in <coughs> Dead Island 2, you can jump into people's games. And, and I, I don't like doing that, even though it's like co-op. Even, it's with, even if it's with 
like y'all, for instance. I just, because one of us is bound to have to go to sleep because we got to go to work the next day. And then I lose my spot. No, you know what? Single player, fine. That's what makes me, that's what has me concerned with the state of gaming and the way it seems to be trending down. And, and for me, I'm like, is it because of this multiplayer stuff? And everybody expects this to be that and that to be this. When you know who still does it right and they're not charging 70 bucks for a fucking game? Nintendo. And I can't stand Nintendo. But Nintendo's still doing it. The call of the fucking whatever, the newest one is $70 at release. No way it is, for really. It is. They raised the fucking price on that game to seventy fucking dollars because of the trend. Oh, oh Nintendo, you I sold was out. Pissed Nintendo because they can't out. even use that fucking excuse. Oh, it's a next gen game. There ain't been a new Switch. That was Nintendo yeah. being fucking greedy. And, and as of I think it was like a month ago, they reported like the console sales. Nintendo's third. Yeah, and their oh, yeah. Switch sales, like well, they're not doing too well. I stand That's because corrected. they need a new console, but I, I stand no, corrected. Holy I crap. get it, it, it. That's where Nintendo could have been. Yo, we ain't gonna do the seventy dollar. Here's the new fucking Zelda, sixty dollars, and then they raise the price to seventy. And I, I, I'm not a Nintendo fanboy. I don't like Zelda. I looked at that and I'm like, you have no excuse. You don't have a super switch, like a, a new switch system, like a better anything. You're rocking the same shit since 2017. At least Sony and Microsoft pretend to have a fucking excuse. <laughs> Nintendo, you're greedy. <laughs> oh, brother, Chase, I, um, my question to you, is it, is, it, is it multiplayer games and the idea of how do we do this now without doing these microtransactions that's killing gaming? Or is it something completely different? I honestly, I think it's a, it's a plethora of many things. Um, so let's go back a few, uh, a little while here. Let's think back. You know, the trend of MMOs and Fortnite style games and, all of that that happened way before COVID. So not yeah. only that, you're you're in that kind of a market right now where they think that's and 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 companies, you know, as you know, they're they're wanting to be in the top of the business. And right now, I guess even though even though Fortnite still is the most played game right now, just because it's a bunch of little kids that play it, um, that's where companies are at you know, with their mindset, like shit, we had, we had two cool video games get announced that look really cool. Like, um, uh, I think it's called Odyssey Chronicle or something like that. Or Chronicle Odyssey, but it's an MMO and it looks like a game in the style of the Witcher and it's an MMO and it, and, and I, I don't want to play it, but you know, I don't. I don't like playing games like that. But it, but what I guess where I'm leading with that is, is there are many games that have been announced recently that that should be story driven games and they're MMOs. And I think that's just the trend of um, companies right now still think that's what's viable. And I don't know. I'm not a marketing guy. I don't know the numbers. I just watch the what's being relayed. You know, but that's I think that's one of the aspects is, you know, that's what's still making money right now. Uh, however, COVID still messed the whole market up. That put a lot of companies in hurt places with layoffs and financial situations. But now that we're coming out of it, these games, though, that we are getting, you know, I, what I imagine is is the reason why is because at the end of the day, when you, it's like a movie. When you have a lease date for your film to come out, you have the same thing with video games, and you have to make that game be – you have to have that game be put out because it charges the company's money to delay games. And they had done the same thing with movies. It costs money to do that as well. So 
I think what happens is is it's these leasing companies that are saying, hey, we need the game out regardless whether it's good or not because we need to make our money back or we're, you know, that's going to lead to a whole nother turn. And I think that's what the case is, is all these games that were in development during COVID. I mean, look, I'm not going to I'm not going to hide away from the fact that even God of War Ragnarok had a lot of bugs and messiness at launch, too. And I haven't replayed it since the new game plus came out, but I don't know if those things are fixed. But yeah, at launch, the game was just as buggy as everything else. And that's been the track record. The games that have been in the the impregnation of COVID, they are releasing, you know, not very like stabilized and that's what's kind of that's what i'm thinking is going on i'm thinking it's more of a money and a time issue than you know a quality over quantity type thing which if i knew the answer how that could get fixed i would tell you but i don't know how companies do that because at the end of the day it might be something where these developers just don't have a chance but at the end of the day that hurts it, that hurts anyone involved even the leasing companies because they either make their money or lose their money and so i think that's just where we're at i think it's it's a leasing and time issue and just unfortunate events situation you know but, um, you know, because that's why after these games release, that's why companies do patches and updates to fix these things, to make the game working. But it doesn't help because they also, it's like, but why does it have to be after the fact? Well, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, when you're putting these games out, you're, you're only, the people that are testing your games, there's only a handful of people. You know, it's not like the millions of people that buy the games, you know that can give you enough feedback that find these things, you know? So I think that's, it's just a manner of that, you know, it's just, it just, it's, I guess it's just that type of management, you know, but I, but I'm not, I could be completely wrong. JR, let me yeah. ask you, um, <laughs> with, with the way Redfall came out and I, I mean, I want, I want to hear your take on Phil Spencer's uh, words about all of this. Do you see Microsoft in panic mode, or do you see them like, ah, it's all right, we, we can do something else? Microsoft has been in fucking panic mode since Halo Infinite's multiplayer launched and campaign. This is why. I'm going to break it down for you. And it all, I, I believe it all stems from that. Halo Infinite was supposed to be like Halo Combat Evolved or Halo 3. It was going to bring the Microsoft Xbox fan base together and the multiplayer. It's all right. It's all right. You can attest to this if you've played a few matches online. It's okay. It's it, And I'll get to that. Halo Infinite's campaign was good, but one thing that people were like, hey, couch co-op, can we get it? And then 343 is like, we axed it, even though I've seen it on YouTube with a few, like, glitches, at least back then, you could get it to work, and it was stable. It was the money and manpower and Microsoft shopping the budget, so that gets tossed. Forge, I don't know if it's out. I don't know if the online co-op for the campaign's out. But that's the, the thing was is people wanted the campaign. They wanted the campaign. They want to play with their buddies. I want to play with my buddies. G1, you and me, we play Halo Infinite's campaign together online. That would be the dopest shit ever. We'd be fucking around. I won't play the main campaign because I don't have a friend to play with. It's It doesn't... I never beat a Halo game by myself in the campaign. I always play with someone because that's where the fun is. We get to fuck around. I love that about the original Halo games. Legendary, and I beat him by yeah. myself. And crack open a nice cold Pepsi at the... <laughs> <laughs> but no, I always had fun with that. So playing Halo Infinite by myself, I lost interest. I haven't touched it. I fuck around in the multiplayer with friends sometimes, but that's where the eggs were. You know why? Because 343 and Microsoft were like, hey, the season passes, the skins, the dumb shit that costs money, or you grind your ass off. 
That's where they were throwing it in, the live service stuff. That's what did Halo Infinite in. The focus wasn't on what me, at least me, and I know a few friends of mine, we just wanted to play the campaign together. We don't give a shit. If we're going to jump into the multiplayer, we're jumping in to be dipshits and just be fools. But it was to play together in the campaign to enjoy it, whatever. And that's where Microsoft lost their way was with Halo Infinite. So Redfall comes out half-baked because they're panicking. Holy shit. Sky, or, uh, Bethesda's fucking, what is that? Starfield. I almost said Skyfall for some reason. Starfield. Yeah. Uh, Starfield. Delay, delay, delay. Because Bethesda knows after Fallout 76 they cannot put out a busted up fucking game again. And, you know, bugs are one thing, funny bugs are one thing, but Bethesda's Fallout 76 launch was a disaster. I was there, and I was pissed. That pissed me off, and they know damn well they can't do it. So Microsoft buys, buys Bethesda. They're still getting a little bit of kickback from uh, Elder Scrolls Online, the MMO, but it's not making the money. So that's pushback. Shit, we don't have a fucking game coming out. Redfall, get it out. Th- because... We can take the hit from Redfall getting the shit reviews. You save money on marketing, throw it out half-baked, patch it, because that's how gaming's been since the PS4, Xbox One days, throw it out half-baked, patch it later. So they do that with Redfall, but they still dare charge that $70 price. And that's where people were fucking, no, we're done. So Microsoft panicked, got it out, seen the backlash, and that's where Phil Spencer, see, and I was on his side for a while. I understood him. I got him. I was like, he turned the Xbox One around for me. Let's see what he's going to do in the future. And then he fucking says, we're focusing on hardware. What do you mean you're focusing? You don't have any game. you got to have a game. Gears of War for me hasn't been good since Gears of War 3. That's true. You don't have that Microsoft, that that name, that game. Sony has fucking God of War. Unfortunately, The Last of Us. You know, it's all this shit. Horizon, fucking Silent Hill 2. The remake is now going to be a PC and Sony exclusive. So you, Sony's got this shit. Microsoft has jack shit. And we're sitting here and I'm starved for it. And that's the problem. They're panicking, so it's like Phil Spencer in his mind, and logically it makes sense. Hey, we fucked up with Redfall, but that's not our focus. See, we're working on the new Xbox refresh console with more ray tracing, but people like me are like, I don't care. I just got the Series X. I have nothing to play on it but my AAA games. Meanwhile, Sony, as much as I'm still pissed off at Sony for a lot of shit, granted, and the gameplay mechanics are the exact same for every game now, they do have exclusives. And Microsoft just, I don't know what's going on, because they had a chance. The more powerful fucking console. The smaller console. Jesus Christ, when I unbox the PS5, I'm like, Series X is like a quarter of the size. This is fucking great. Meanwhile, the PS5 is almost as big as my fucking two thousand five hundred dollar fucking PC tower. For my PS5 to be on my shelf, yeah, it's fucking huge. (laughs) Microsoft, I just I don't get it. So you, they want to talk about the hardware, but people are certain again. That's where Microsoft's getting the shit. It's like Game Pass, brilliant idea. Put something on there that's yours. But you they buy have, the studios. But they have everything on there that's theirs already. That's the thing. They exactly. have everything on there. But that's the problem. That's the problem because I look at that lineup and I'm like, fuck, man. Like back in the day when I used to think of Xbox 360 or Xbox in general, it was Time Splitters 2 or Future Perfect, Left 4 Dead 2. I, and fucking Halo and Gears of War. And now I'm just like, what's going on? Like, and it sucks because the Xbox One, it was the same problem to an extent. It turned around later, but it was the same problem and it carried. 
And that's where I think Phil Spencer is a marketing – he's good at marketing. But you got to, like, stop talking about hardware and give us some software. And that kind of makes me want to bring up the point. It's funny because, yes, I agree, Phil Spencer's great at marketing, but they lost – and this is part of a big war that's going on between Sony and Microsoft that I wanted to bring attention. They lost their my, their marketing yeah. acquisition a couple uh, uh, back during the summer, and so that's why we were seeing all these games that were coming out that were not exclusives for Sony being advertised as PlayStation exclusives. Yeah. So like well, it, like uh, Dead Space was being advertised as a PlayStation exclusive, and then like Hogwarts Legacy was being advertised as a PlayStation exclusive, and they're not. And, but no. it's because Sony bought the marketing rights underneath well, Microsoft. And here's the other problem too: is Microsoft banks on the companies that already exist? They're banking on we're Microsoft. It's not just Xbox. We're Microsoft. We own Windows 10, 11, and we built. Flight simulators. What the fuck does Microsoft do other than computers? But I digress. They got money. Planets to Starfield. Yeah, <laughs> they got money, so they sit here and they're like, "Yo, I'll just buy the exclusives." No, fuck that. I'll buy the company, make it an exclusive. The problem is, is Bethesda ain't putting shit out, and Activision fell through, so they're banking on jacking shit. And Jack just left town. Wait, okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. So Act- Activision is still third party? It's third party. At least in the UK, it went to the board, and Sony was there, and Sony made their case, and the whoa, board said, no. Nope. So, uh, but that, as of, uh, okay, as of yesterday, though, or two days ago, as of reading what happened, the deal did go through. Microsoft did acquire Activision. But it's on hold because the board of blah, 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 laws, bullshit, okay, so Sony appeals, Microsoft appeals. It's it's never going to fucking happen. Which, which, Microsoft's just going to fucking be like, no, it's going to cost too much. And that was Sony's plan all along, which, which brings, is bullshit. Which brings the point because it's not like Activision has made really great games recently. No. And now that Microsoft is trying to act, it's like, why are you buying another polished turd? <laughs> you know? Because Call of Duty sells regardless. It does. Unfortunately, it, yeah. It just because, sells. And Microsoft, you know, and that's the problem. They don't think of the exclusivity on their system. Yeah. They want it on every platform, which is great for a revenue stream. But then what's the point of buying the Xbox? Right. And- and you want to talk about a game that well, was Well, oh, oh, wait, 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 one second, one second, Chase, one second, Chase. I can tell you the reason for that. The same reason why Sega tanked. I said, fuck it, Sonic everywhere. Yep. You make more money. Yeah. You make more money. Yeah. So right. if, if you acquire Activision and you say you can make games for everybody, it don't matter if they buy an Xbox or not. They're still buying an Activision game and that's going right to Xbox. Yeah. My bad, Chase. And I was just going to say, you know, you, you want to talk about games that were buggy out of just nostalgia and curiosity. I bought Modern Warfare 2, the newest one, and that game is almost unplayable. The campaign for that game is so trash. But they focus that on multiplayer, and even the multiplayer gets shit on. Because the multiplayer's crap, too. Activision just shells them out. Now, with Activision is Blizzard, sorry. I'm just going to throw this out there. With the Activision is Blizzard, and I got back into World of Warcraft. I played the new expansion. It's great. World of Warcraft's great. And I would love to see WoW on a console, but I'm saying, like, it's it's done. Well, listen, if Diablo and, could get on consoles, I can't see why World of Warcraft can't. Uh, because the player base are a bunch of snobs. Anyways. <laughs> PC elitist! <laughs> yeah, seriously, and it bothers me because I'm like, sometimes I don't want to sit here. I play my WoW on my TV with this Dolby Atmos. Um, so they're all right. like the Imperial from Star Wars. So, yeah. So all right, so we're pure. Microsoft needs, as of right now, they they're relying on third party publishers. Uh, they're relying on the consumer. 
to buy third party publishing game publishers games on Xbox to maintain a revenue stream because they are not actively dishing anything out and what they do dish out actively you get shit like Redfall. Yeah. All right, I or got the Halo Infinite multiplayer. Uh, that's still so, so yeah, you know, uh, I always liked the Game Pass model. I think it was genius and I it's, know where they were going. It's like, look, yeah. if you get a $15 a month subscription, then whatever these games we're pumping out that we're going to put on this subscription service is going to pay for itself in about four months, three months. Three months yeah. it's paid for. And and then they'll keep going. So then, let's say, now I bought, I bought the Halo Infinite Xbox Series X. So I own the game, right? But let's say I did, and I'm playing it off of Game Pass. Now that game's been out since 2001. It is now 2023. I paid for that game. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times over already. That, to yeah. me, was a genius, genius business plan. That's why I'm like, maybe they don't need to make games because people are still paying $15 a month. And, I mean, look at it. Let's just say the three of us all pay $15 a month, right? That's $45 a month that they get from just the three of us to play Halo. If that was what we were yeah. getting, you're playing it for. Now, in terms of uh, exclusives, and this is where I'm going to segue into the PlayStation real quick. In terms of exclusives, it's fucking crazy when you say that because I just saw the other day, Microsoft apparently, and I don't know how true it is, but I believe I'm 99% sure this is true, Microsoft is about to bust out the uh, Gears of War remastered. So you're going to get Gears of War 2 and Gears of War 3 remastered, and I'm like, oh shit. So I, I I didn't get into it. I didn't see what the bells and whistles are because when I looked at the runtime yeah. on the video, it was like 45 minutes. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Tell me what it is in 10 minutes or less. I'm out. So I don't, you know, that's just, that, that, that was me. But I saw that and I was like, oh, shit. And everything seemed official and legit. But rehashing old IPs as a fucking placebo before we have brand new IPs that kind of drives me crazy, which segues into what Sony does, and we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about it because you can't have milk. You can't have chocolate milk without milk, right? You can't have yeah. chocolate without the. You can't have milk chocolate without milk or chocolate. It's what I'm trying to say. Sony does the. You know I've been on record. The last great PlayStation was the PlayStation 3. And the only reason why I say that, because the PlayStation 2, to me, is the greatest, is one of the greatest consoles ever made. Sits up there oh, at yeah. the top with the Super Nintendo, sits up there with the Sega Genesis, sits up there with the Xbox 360. The PlayStation 2 is one of the greatest systems ever made. Um, but the PlayStation 3 was the last best PlayStation, especially when it became affordable. Because there was variety with that console. Yes. When the Sony PlayStation 4 came out, they killed Microsoft because what did they do in that E3? Microsoft was like, we're going to focus on making an entertainment center for your living room. Bitch, please, I already got one of those. Where's the games? Where's Halo? Where's Gears? Where the fuck is Left 4 Dead 3? Son of a bitch. Where are they? Yeah. Where are they? Nope. Sony said... Hey, where's <laughs> Half-Life Where's Half-Life? <laughs> Where is Half-Life 3? Boom, boom, boom. You know, Sony let Microsoft go on first and shoot themselves in the fucking foot. Sony put the clip out the gun and said, hold up, hold my beer wife. Hey, y'all guys want games? Check this shit out. Oh, by the way, we're only going to be like $350. What was it? $350, $400. They cut it at a limit. It and was $400. $400. And the Xbox One was $100 more. Remember when the PS3 came out and it was like four, dollars $500 when that shit first It came was $600 $3. when it so came the out. So the PS4 said, yo, we're going to take $200 off from our last previous thing and we're going to give you a system. You, can, you got no idea what's coming. Unfortunately, the only first person shooter that Sony dropped was Killzone Shadow whatever. Shadowfall. Shadow. And that was, that was like at drop. That was almost 10 years ago. That was almost 10 years ago. And this is my beef with Sony. Stop with the third-person shooters. Stop. 
Yeah, third person. They all of them third person shooters. Even if you have a samurai sword, it's still over the shoulder third person fucking uh, um, uh, uh, cover combat. It's 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 unbelievable. By the way, you know who who really started all that shit, made it popular and famous? Gears of War, Xbox. It, just saying, I'm throwing it out there. Throwing really it out there. did. Throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. And, and, and Microsoft can't get their fucking heads out their own asses to to make no IPs. Uh, wait, when when did Uncharted come out? Oh, no, that was a, that Uncharted. Was yeah, that was way after the original Gears of War. Gears, if I remember correct, the original Gears of War was a launch title for the 360 around 2005, it was, 2006. It was. It was. Yeah. Uncharted was about 2007, 2008. Yeah, I, and look, don't get me wrong, I love Uncharted. I love Sony exclusives. That's the only reason why I keep buying those consoles. Now, I don't own a 5 yet. I don't want to own a 5. I got to be honest. Not until the price comes down some more. Uh, but what we're three years into that that system's lifespan right now, I, 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 I don't need it. My 4 works just fine. The same way my 3 works just fine. I still use my 3 when I want to go and fucking play, I don't know, Resistance for the fucking man for crying out loud, Sony. Hmm? It doesn't make sense, but I digress. Um, the only reason why I would buy a PlayStation 5, and this is where I, 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 I love Sony in this regard, they have system sellers. If they say Spider-Man 2 is a PlayStation 5 only game, well then... It is. Fuck! It's already been announced. No, <laughs> it is no. A PlayStation 5 experience. I mean, no. You can always spend $3,000 on a PC to play it. <laughs> I will never ever. I'm telling you right now. I, I won't, I'm, I'm not a PC gamer. I don't give a fuck that I can plug my controller in. You know what? I don't have. I am not Henry Cavill. Okay. I don't got the time nor the money, or reverse the money nor the time to build a fucking proper game and Wolverine. Rig. Wolverine's right. Wolverine's gonna be a PS5 exclusive too. Yeah. Wolverine. I don't care they about that. They have a Wolverine game. Insomniac has a Wolverine game coming out. I don't care about that until I see that. Um, but I know the quality behind Spider-Man. So in that regard, that's I'm like, shit, well, now I got to put money down. And I don't know, man. That, that little teaser trailer they put for it looked really cool. <laughs> Best Wolverine game is um, the Wolverine Origins for the PS3 and Xbox 360. <laughs> Oh my God, that game was brutal. And it was br- no, that game is literally the best Wolverine game. That game is one of my favorite superhero games. That no, shit- no, I mean that. I mean that in a good way. Brutal in a good way. It was Bru- fucking sick. Hell it was like yeah. in the style of God of War and did. I yes, loved it. It was great, dude. It, it sits up there with Batman Arkham series and the <laughs> Spider Man game as it's it's th- those are my top three right. video game superhero video games. That that game is fucking dope as shit. Remaster that. <laughs> Remaster that, but I digress. Um, Sony got to get Sony got to get it together. You can't keep doing Last of Us. I don't. Uh, Last of Us remastered ten years after the first game came out. Re, uh, part two, then the Last of Us uh, right. remastered part one. God, get the fuck out of here! Wait, you forgot about the TV show, and then the season two of the TV show. That's gonna be yeah, the split. Season two, that's in two parts. That's gonna be coming out. <laughs> Yo, here's my shit. Here's my shit. Holy shit, Sony, Sony. People love the Last of Us TV show. People who never played the game loved that show. Loved it. Loved it. Okay, I don't know if they loved it so much to go and buy a fucking system. They could have bought a refurbished PS4 and played that shit. No problem. But you know what's coming out on Peacock real soon? Not wrestling, Jr. But you know it's coming out on Peacock real soon. Twisted fucking metal. Twisted fucking metal. That's yours, Sony. That's yours, Sony. You know it's coming out of theaters really fucking soon. I can't believe they made a fucking movie about this shit. Gran Turismo. Batman. I said. Oh, Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo. That's what <laughs> I said. Are you fucking kidding me? Gran Turismo. By the way, I didn't know that was based on a true story. I was like, is it what? I digress, though. Plus, Neil Blomkamp is directing that. And I'm a Neil Blomkamp fan. Just saying. But That movie looks decent, though. It looks decent. Yeah, well, Twisted Metal does it. That looks like shit. They didn't show anything. They didn't show anything. They showed absolutely nothing. And 
My yeah, man, it still looked like shit. No, they, no, it did. My man Samoa Joe, my man Samoa Joe is playing the motherfucking um. Oh my god! Why did I lose it? Axel Sweet Tooth, Sweet Tooth, Spectre. Sweet Tooth. Yes, <laughs> my man Samoa Joe, the Ring of Honor Television Champion, is playing Sweet Tooth. I am all in for it. Oh, shit. Huh? Don't, don't you guys also notice they had that Tetris movie coming out? But wasn't that like a documentary? <laughs> with, with, uh, with Karen Edgerton in it that plays uh, Eggsy and the Kingsman. They yeah. have a Tetris movie coming out. Yeah, that, that's a document. That's like a documentary, like the the Air Jordan movie. It's like the how Tetris how Tetris was marketed and and made millions right. upon millions. But you got Twisted Metal. You got Gran Turismo. Right there. These are two IPs that you have. You haven't... Well, I don't know about Gran Turismo. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was one. There was one for the PS5. Nobody liked it because of the microtransactions. What a surprise. What a surprise. But you have Twisted Metal. We haven't seen a Twisted Metal game since Twisted Metal Black back in the PS3. So well, there was... There was one on the PS3, but it fucking flopped and killed the series. Yeah, Twisted it, Metal Black. It was after that, because there was Twisted Metal Black, there was the PSP exclusive that came to the PS2 after, and then the PS3 exclusive Twisted Metal Black by the creators of God of War. I'm not even fucking with you. Was, it, it wait, exists. Wait, wait. Was that the one where they were like mini cars? Nope. Oh. This is a, this is an actual twisted metal game, and it fucking flopped. That's a, I'm not surprised you haven't heard about it. No, I Santa haven't. Monica Studios made a twisted metal game, and I played it, and it was a PS3 exclusive, and I was excited. It was a pile of shit. Well, I mean, not only the bugs, it didn't focus on what twisted metal black. It's my personal favorite, twisted metal three. It didn't focus on the combat. It was literally more of like a racing mini game with guns, and that's, it was called Twisted Metal, and it was disgusting. That I do know that. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, that that that's because I remember the concept being different. I digress. But these are IPs that you have that you have not utilized in a whole generation. Why not? Well, at least Twisted Metal. Again, I'll go back when the PS4 dropped. I love the fact that one of the drop exclusives. Was infamous. Now, granted, again, over the shoulder, third person. But I love the concept of infamous. Drop that. Where's Killzone? Where's Resistance for the Men? And I mean, even at this point, even at this point, you already did it with freaking The Last of Us twenty five times. Why not just remaster Resistance for the Men? You need. Why not remaster the first Killzone? Because. It won't compete with Call of Duty. They already said it. They have nothing to compete with Call of Duty. So they won't fucking bother. Yeah, that's literally that's literally what they've been talking about, too, is like Microsoft is like, you know, because Sony's been complaining with them about, you know, hey, we don't want you having Activision. And, and Microsoft is like, no, just make a new IP. And it's been like Sony's like, no. It's like, yeah. Wait, 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 yeah. Want Hold on, Chase. Chase, so what you're telling me is, what you're telling me is that Microsoft is actually for the fans. They said, look, if Sony ain't going to make a motherfucking new first-person shooter game, we're going to have to go and buy Activision to force their hand so we can play a new Sony first-person <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> so I would kill for a new, I would kill for a new Last of Us. And you would like, what? Seriously. I'm not Last of Us Resistance. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but seriously, the dual sense is set up for it because you got those triggers, those the, the fucking haptic feedback. It does feel good in some games when you just pull the trigger because uh, again, the majority of games it's dog shit. I hate it. Oh yeah, but that's where Sony can come in because as someone who shoots real guns, that shit, it, it, you know, it clicked that's with why me. You made it. That's yeah, what, and that's the thing that's funny is they said the reason why we have that haptic feedback is for when you use a weapon like shooting a gun, we want you to f feel like you're actually using they, that weapon. They don't make their own. They yeah. do first party titles 
most resistant to kill zone. Hey, real quick question to both of you guys. I'm gonna ask, uh, I'll start with you, brother Chase. Did Sony acquire Bungie? Yes. So now they own Destiny. Yeah, they um, own Destiny, yes. So, it's, well, it's a yes and no. They own a Bungie, but the rights for Destiny 2 still somewhat belong to Activision. Activision still gets right. kicked back. But, but so, here's the thing, here's the thing too. Bungie is abandoning Destiny. They are focusing on a new IP. For Sony? That's been in development for a while. Yep. For Sony only as an exclusive? It's probably going to be because Sony knows how to actually make exclusives, unlike Microsoft. And, and, and yes, these, 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 these companies that Sony has acquired are all going to be exclusives. Holy shit. You know what Bungie's going to do for their new Sony exclusive? Killzone. They, they're going to they're gonna do Killzone. They're going to do the original version of Halo where it was a third person <laughs> over the shoulder shooter. Well, no. I just want them to make Titanfall 3. That's, that's, a, that's the shooter we need. That's respawn. That's respawn. They're busy with Jedi fucking tanks. It's a Jedi survivor. You said Jedi tanks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking of Jedi flopped as fuck unfinished. The sequel. Listen, I... Look. Because I, I know we're on a tight time frame here, but I... Sony State of Play is coming up. Now, yeah. before we get into that, I, I just want I saw today, it dropped earlier this morning, the Mortal Kombat 1 trailer. And they didn't focus on any gameplay. It was straight up focusing on story, and it literally is like restarting everything. So I love what they're doing, and they really focused on like the fatalities and the gore. It reminded me of Dead Island 2 and everything. I was like, oh my god, this is beautiful. It's so brutal. Um... Now that's that's third party. What third party game can you see? Well, no, because it would be Call of Duty, because everybody fucking plays Call of Duty, even if it sucks or not. Alright, so that's not even the right question. What can Sony honestly do? What what can they showcase at their state of play that they have not shown us yet? That's not a third party game where we'd be like, here we go, Sony. With the exception of so Spider-Man 2. Can you elaborate too. a third-party game real quick? Third-party, like, if it's, like, you know, Activision. Tsunami, Capcom, yeah. Activision, EA. Not an exclusive? Not an exclusive. Big, Sony's biggest mistake, one of their biggest mistakes, was losing the rights to Lara Croft. That was a PlayStation exclusive. When that first dropped, yeah. that was a PlayStation only thing. They should have held on. They should have. They should have. They should have scooped the host up. I said, "Yo, same with, same with Crash and Spyro." Holy shit! Absolutely. Whoa, wait a minute. What do you mean? Because I thought the next Tomb Raider game was a, is going to be under a PlayStation Sony ex- title. Really? Because that's what they've been talking about. The ne- the next Tomb Raider game coming out was just and who was a Square Enix? PlayStation bought Square Enix. I remember when no. uh, I remember when they had like I think the last Tomb Raider game came out and Sony had it first for about two three months and then it released ah, on the okay. Xbox. Okay. So I don't know if well, they did that. Sony's been doing that though. Like at first, Silent Hill two. The remake was supposed to be on PC, PlayStation, and then it was going to be on Xbox in a year. Now it's rumored it's PC and PlayStation oh, never yeah. coming to Xbox. So the the big talk though is, I mean, if I'm not, if I I might be misunderstanding your question, but they are talking about Ghosts of Tsushima two being shown. I mean, but for the fucking same. It's the same. I, I'm, and I, 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 I'm not I'm not that I like understand. That's that's what's, but that's what PlayStation has never been a. They've always been action adventure. They've never been a, a, no, a company that's made. It's not that. It's. The fact that it's going to be the over-the-shoulder, semi-open world with a slight fucking crafting mechanic and 
but that's I get that, but that's that's what is that's what people are that's what people are wanting though. That's not nowadays. Nowadays, nowadays they want it because Sony has streamlined it for two fucking generations now. It started on the PS3. We all know this. It it started with the last of us because it came out on the PS3. It was super popular. People like that. So, so hey, so let's just your, keep fucking doing that. Is your gripe of that you're just getting tired of seeing action adventure games and not first person games? No, no, my, not necessarily. Hold up, I'll because tell you I'm gripe. just confused because is it more of a personal thing or is it something else? Because I, that's where I'm just not following because like this is what Sony's recipe is. I'll tell you my gripe. I'll tell you, you know, my gripe. recipe is action adventure games. I mean, Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, it may not be in the style of that, but that's still, it's it's well, third-person games of what they've been it's doing. It's not over the shoulder, yeah, I'll give, open, listen, my open world with I, crafting mechanics. I'll give, I'll give Sony, I'll give Sony its props. I, I, and I, I do, because, again, I don't own a PS5, but now I have to buy one because apparently Chase broke my heart and ruined my dreams of Spider-Man 2 coming out on a PS4 Pro. Damn it! I digress. I'm sorry. If if on the we learn otherwise, then fine. But no, but I'll, I'll that's, what, that's the that's what they've been catering Spider Man two for. I, yeah, and I, I believe that. I believe that. I mean, like I give props to Sony. Yeah, like yes, the action adventure. It's all the same. It's like all of this like this dreary ass shit. But then you have something like um, Ratchet and Clank, which again, still a third person over the top shooter uh, action adventure, but it's. It's more cartoony, you know what I'm saying? It's more, it, it's more for like the childlike function. Whereas everything else Sony puts out is definitely mature. Now that being said, fuck, where was I going? Damn it, Jim! Oh yes, I'll give you a perfect example of what my beef with Sony is because I played them back to back. I played God of War Ragnarok. I enjoyed it. I. I we had an almost two hour podcast me and Chase broke that shit down I enjoyed the game like we said like Chase said at the beginning of this podcast it is buggy I haven't played it since like Chase we haven't played it since we don't know if it's been fixed but there was times where Kratos would start juking in and out of the screen and I'm like what the hell's going on can't be a connection issue it's a fucking it's downloaded to the game to the system it's not a connection issue (laughs) right it was yeah he was going back to (laughs) Greece so, but my beef with that game was not not the beef with that game. My beef with Sony is because I didn't find this out until afterwards. I'm playing the game. I get to the ending. I have a grand old time. I thought the ending was fantastic. The big ass war. You're, that's it. You know. You, you know the deal. Spoilers abound, but you and you basically create Ragnarok, if you will. You in, you invade um, not Olympus. You you invade Asgard. With an army. And I loved it. Then, I play Horizon uh, Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West. A game that predates God of War Ragnarok. And I get to the end. And fuck me, it is the same exact thing. And the reason why I say it's the same exact thing is because I literally just finished playing God of War Ragnarok. Okay. And it was like literally beat for beat. Uh, the so characters you're, you're, are different. You're meaning like narrative mechanics is the same. The narrative mechanics, but like literally, I'm not even lying, brother Chase. It felt like the level design was the same. I was sitting there, I'm like, I know where to go. <laughs> uh, they, they, you, the level design the same as what game? God of War. It. I'll put it like this. In okay. 2019. In 2019, Disney put out two movies, two totally different genres, both of them the ends of their series. The first one that came out was in May. That was called Avengers Endgame. The second one that came out was in December. That was called Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. None of these movies make any sense when you look at them at the same like together. They're not the same movie. But when you get to the ending, it is the exact same ending. The exact same ending. Uh, down okay, to the lines. What you mean. Down to the lines where Thanos says, I am inevitable. 
and Tony Stark says, and I am Iron Man, snaps his fingers, and Thanos literally turns to dust. He, that's in the movie. I'm not making that up. And at the end, that was in May. And then in December, Palpatine, the greatest Sith of all time, says, I am the Sith. And Ray says, and I am the Jedi. Shoots his lightning back at him, and guess what? Palpatine turns to dust. I ain't making this shit up. Are you? Why are you reminding me of the rise of Skywalker? What I'm because what, what I'm trying to say is Sony did that with two of yeah. its triple A flagship games. God of War to me is always going to be the flagship game. God of War for me, you that's my favorite Sony franchise. And I'm not talking about the remake, the 2018, and this one. I, I like them, but the originals. But Kratos is number one, right? Period. Yeah. The ending to God of War 2, Ragnarok, literally was a fucking copy-paste job of the ending to Horizon from Forbidden West. The big war, the group, of, you, you, your group of friends and allies, just the settings were different. One was in freaking, uh, 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 yeah, Asgard, and the other one was on, you know, Future Earth with futuristic stuff. But I swear to God, as I'm playing, and I... I and I played Horizon Second, and that game came out first. But I was like, I know exactly what to do. And it was so weird, because I had just finished playing God of War. I'm afraid of that. That scares me, because to me, that was Sony being lazy. And I'm not saying that... Remember, there's two completely different studios under the Sony umbrella, which I, which I love. Well, but I was like, whoa! One, uh, one thing I want to add in, too, is it, it, it makes me under the point, because... It makes me add the point because I, I noticed that recently these game companies like Naughty Dog, God of War, uh, uh, Gorilla, and uh, I think there's another one too. Okay, well, it's not Sucker yet. Punch did some God of War Easter eggs and Horizon Easter eggs. Yes. But what I'm saying is it's all these games have connected Easter eggs as well. And it makes me wonder if, I, I, I mean, I wonder if it's the right, like I'm not, I'm not saying all of them are just coming together saying like, let's just all make the same sequences and different storytelling games. But like, it makes me wonder if there's, there has to be some type of co connection aside from it being just a coincidence. Yeah. It's definitely you a know? correlation. Yeah. And it's funny too, because both of them are the sequel games, you know, both of them. Right. Whereas, so, whereas God of War gave us kind of a definitive ending and it can brand, like we said in our pocket, that game could branch out any which way it wants to go, and it's going to be dope. Where Horizon Forbidden West set up the third chapter, you know what and, I mean? And and this is just kind of off topic, but Adam Harrington, the guy that plays Sindri, the dwarf in God of War, he basically spoiled that. Yeah, that we have another God of War coming. Oh, there was never He's, a doubt. You know, a couple of months ago, never a doubt. Yeah. That that game churns, and again, and and maybe this is why Sony makes me mad because they know. That these are the types of games that make money, and maybe Kill Zone two and three, and and Resistance Fall of Man one, two, and three did not make money. But it's something other than the formula, and it's not the action adventure that bothers me by any stretch of the imagination. I I love action adventure games. It's the fact that if it's not Gran Turismo. It's Horizon, God of War, The Last of Us, Uncharted. The, the Spider-Man's a breakaway. It wasn't the same kind of combat. It was more Arkham. It was more Arkham. It, like, that, that was a superhero like, game. You know, yeah, but that's where. It, oops. But that's I, where it bothers me. It's like because they have the Killzone or Resistance are good games. I mean. Fuck twisted metal. When did that go out the window? When did when did we wake up and just like oh remember twisted metal black? Arguably the greatest twisted metal game. Yeah, we're just we're done after the reboot because we gave it to a studio who didn't care. Like, give it to someone who gives a shit. It's your IP. You have them. If I'm not wrong, uh, what's his name? The guy that made God of War Jaffe. Is it David Jaffe? Yes. Yeah, he, he he was a part of the Twisted Metal. Yeah, he was the original one of the original creators of God of War, the original, and he worked on God of or uh, Twisted Metal Black. 
Um, and he hasn't been, I mean, he's kind of got something going on on the side, but he's not in anything. So you're right. telling me he's a part of two of the greatest video game franchises of all time, and nobody's fucking hiring him except indie studios? Sony, wake up. People yeah. love your first party titles, but you're losing people like G1 and myself who are just sick of the fucking formula. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima 2, great. Can't wait to have over the shoulder samurai open world yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. mechanics. Ghost of Tsushima is not over the shoulder. Uh, Ghost, I, of, Ghost of Tsushima is more like your old school style third person. It's kind of linear to the side, if you think about it. Define old school, because I'm thinking God of War, the original, or Max Payne or something. Not arcadey like God of War was. Yeah, no, I I, I, I see what you're saying, Chase. I see what you're saying, Chase. But at the same time, I I know what Jay also talked about. All of those games, story aside... Before you go on, I just wanted to say... What I would like to see implemented into that, though, is what Red Dead Redemption 2 did, where they give you all camera options. They give you the first person. They give you the back the back third person. They give you the over-the-shoulder. They give you the far-away, God of War, linear, arcade style screen, too, if you want. Yeah. That was what, that's what I think games should start implementing. I, and what I want is variety like it's fine to have action adventure games but when that's every single fucking game that you're putting out as a first party you know they used to have more racing games they used to have first person shooters they had their 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 um god of wars the hack and slash they had they had a lot of different stuff they had survival horror remember they had the a original, smash brothers ripple yeah they had a smash brothers ripple. the the original silent hill silent hill 3 were both sony exclusives and silent I, hill 2 was an exclusive for and, a while same and, with 4 but and, and yeah. don't forget they caught it the market on fighting games when they took street yeah. Fighter 5 they took street yeah. Fighter 5 i was broken hearted i was like wait what I, and again Mortal Kombat for the longest time was only on a Sony platform. It was on the on PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2. I don't think it I don't even remember if it ever came to the original Xbox. It took a fat fucking minute. No, it did. It did. It did cuz I did had it? yeah, no, I owned it on um you got to remember Mortal Kombat 1, 2 and 3 was on Super Nintendo and the Genesis. Um, okay. And then, and but, then I mean, the, the, there's a lot of those Mortal Kombat games that are just on the PlayStation 2 though. They never went to the original Xbox. No, they were on. Uh, they were on the Nintendo GameCube. I owned them. That's where I got. Oh them. fuck! I it forget like, the GameCube exists. It was like oh. it was like those Godzilla games back in the Atari yeah. Godzilla games. It's like that. But and that's what I'm trying to say is like I all I ask from Sony like I got your console. I look at your exclusives and I haven't touched. I own Horizon Zero Dawn. I still haven't touched it because it's just. It looks like Assassin's Creed with God of War, the the new God of War, and I'm just like, I don't care. Um, and, and then I play God of War Ragnarok, I'm like, yeah, God of War 2018 and Ragnarok were good. And then I look at Uncharted, I'm like, I don't care. I, I like Tomb Raider back in the day. I was, I was a Laura Croft fan. I look at the new Gran Turismo and want to slap the fuck out of whoever came up with the microtransactions. Like, what are you doing? You know, and it, I just want variety. And then you look at Xbox, and they have jack fucking shit. <laughs> so I sit here, and it's weird because I'm starved for what I'm wanting, waiting for a remake of a game that I know is going to suck. Let's be real here. Silent Hill 2 remakes have fucked suck. I mean, it's Konami. Oh. Konami oh. hasn't done anything good in like 20 years. But that's what I mean. Like I'm, st- I'm, st- I'm fucking starved. And honestly, my PC is picking up the slack because there's shit on PC to play. <laughs> there ain't shit on consoles. So what you're saying is, Sony, I want something new. Xbox, I, I just want something. <laughs> seriously, like, and it's such a, it's such a damn shame. It is because. The PS4, 
I love the PS4, but I started to have the same problem towards the end of when I had a PS4. The, the Back in 2019, where I was like, yo, Sony isn't doing shit that I want. Fucking and Microsoft's just fucking sniffing their own farts in the corner. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know, and, and, and here we are, the, the new consoles, and then it's... It's a repeat. It, it feels honestly like a repeat of it's last generation. Not even, it, it's not even a repeat at this moment. It's not even a takeoff. That's the thing. No, that's a great I'm point. sitting here is, and I bought my yeah. PS5, and I'm still. I, that's why I'm excited for the. And, and I'm sure I'm going to be disappointed come Wednesday, but that's why I'm excited because, like, hopefully, I'm going to understand why I spent the six hundred something, almost six hundred to five. It was like five forty five for my PlayStation. I, you know, why did I, you know, why did I put the money into it? You know, yeah. and hopefully Wednesday I'll know why, but right now it's like, okay, it's... I, I fucking played Dead Space. That's what I got. That's probably the only thing that I've really had other than that God of War, but I've just finished the fucking remaster of Crisis, the first Crisis game. Yeah. Crisis is one of my favorite franchises. That remaster was dog shit. And I just finished it. I paid eleven bucks for it, though, so I'm not too upset. But it's like, it's like at this point, I'm playing old games. Like I'm replaying The Witcher Three because there's a PlayStation Five version that just came out of it, and it's great right now. It's actually a lot more easier to navigate the menus. There's new armor, new new quests, new gun. I mean, not guns, but new armor and weapons and new things to do. It's the same. It's just the same with a new coat of paint. It's it's like, oh, it's prettier. Yeah. It's, yeah, they it's, add it's, some stuff, but that's that's the problem. And that I I don't know what to I, I honestly like it's fucking depressing. And not only that, we're talking about a remaster of Bloodborne that in Dude, my opinion, doesn't need a remaster. They're talking about doing mid-console refreshes, and they're still making games for previous-gen consoles. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to wrap this up, because I'm going to touch on that real quick. That's the problem I have with video games today. You can't do nothing new. Everything has been done. We're rehashing the same thing. Whether it's Sony not getting away from what's making the money and their exclusives and I get that but at the same time you have games like Twisted Metal that's vastly different than Last of Us you have games like Resistance Fall of Man that's vastly different from God of War Switch Kill Zone which is vastly different from Uncharted switch it up whereas these third party games are doing the same exact thing also because and again I say it I play in Dead Island 2, and yeah, it's a sequel that was 35 years in development, apparently. Um, but it's the same old, same old, and it's not just Dead Island. It's, it's Far Cry. It's any one of these types of games where, and I'm talking first-person shooter here, where you got to go from point A to B, but along the way you run into point A, point A, Point A, point B, point A, point C, point A, point D, and do those side quests and do this and do that and get this weapon in. But it's the same thing. And in all honesty, gaming is becoming boring in that regard. You look at Jedi Fallen Order. Or that's the new one, right? What's the new one called? Survivor. Jedi Survivor. Jedi Survivor is the new one. Yeah. So you look at these these two games, right? What are they? Dark Souls clones, right? Like they they they, they yeah. play like a Dark Souls game. I haven't played Survivor yet. I'm going to wait until that game is like thirty bucks, like I did for the first one. I'm gonna wait. I'm not in any rush to get it. It's funny I say that because two years ago, three years ago, I'd have bought anything that came out on the market. Just give it to me. I, I want to eat it. I want to. This is why I got Game Pass. I'm gonna play everything. I don't care. Now, and it's not a monetary issue, it's just a boredom issue. I am very particular with my games. I find that going back into my old library and playing some of those games are way more entertaining than playing anything I'm doing now. I beat Dead Island 2 the other day. I'm running around right now. This is what I'm doing. I'm running around right now trying to find keys to unlock safe boxes. 
There's nothing for it. I get a couple of hundred dollars when I do that. The game's over. I'm done. This is what it got me doing. I paid $70, and all I did was go on a bunch of missions and upgrade some of it bores me. I don't feel a sense of uh, uh, fulfillment with these games. And I think the game companies do this shit now on purpose. They don't, with the exception of Nintendo, because I have not played a Nintendo system since the Wii U. And the only reason why I bought a Wii U is because I could play, uh, um, oh, I got it for my daughter so she could play Mario Kart. That was it. That was it. That was it. But it's 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 just crazy, man. Like, I want variety. I want originality. Sony has that, and they can continue to continue with variety. They just choose not to. But the originality is there, and you know, I see what what y'all saying about Microsoft. I personally enjoy Halo Infinite, but I play it by myself. I don't need to coattail, uh, you know, coattail anybody. I like going by myself, so I enjoy that game. But at the same time, yeah. I'm not going to play Redfall. I never was going to play Redfall, regardless of what these freaking uh, reviews say about it now. Same thing with CD Projekt Red and, and, and Cyber, whatever the fuck it was. What was it? Cyber Gear? Cyberpunk? Cyberpunk 2099, 2049, whatever it was. 2077. See what I'm saying? Way off. I was never going to play it. Never going to play that game. I never cared. So when them games come out and they're buggy as shit, We'll just patch it. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Give me another Batman Arkham game, and I'm not talking about that Arkham Knight shit or whatever, the Gotham Knights. Give, you're giving me another Spider, Spider-Man, and I got to pay extra amount of money. Those are the games I want. Give me games like Resistance. Give me another Infamous, for crying out loud. I don't even care if it's that over-the-shoulder third person. Give it to me. I enjoy that. I enjoy it, but bring back coal. Don't give me that little dweeb. <sighs> I digress. Anyhow, that'll do it. I'm excited for next week. I'm not going to be here live. That's You said that comes on Wednesday, Chase? The Sony State of Play is next Wednesday? All right, Brother Chase is muted right now, but he is shaking his head yes. So I'm definitely going to go with that. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be here because my favorite wrestling company is going to be in town, so I'm going to go to that instead. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. I want to see what Sony does. Uh, when I come back, it'll be all over YouTube. I will definitely watch it when I get back. I, I'm excited. JR, are you excited about that? Do you Anything you want to see in particular from Sony? I just know Silent Hill 2 is going to probably be there, and it's going to be, it's officially a PS5 exclusive. Millie, like, great. So I don't get Dolby Atmos. Awesome. Okay. And Brother Chase? He's definitely still muted. But I'm sure he's going to say, I don't care what comes out, as long as it's good. As long as it's good. So that'll do it for this episode. Uh, Thank you, Brother Chase. Thank you, JR. I appreciate it very much. Thank you guys for joining us. We will see you on the next podcast. We are out of here. I am G1. Peace.